Hey everyone, Scott from Zen Games here, and today in Scott Teaches You Stuff, we're going to have a look at Pokemon cards. Um, I get a lot of questions about Pokemon cards at the shop. I get a lot of parents who don't really understand Pokemon cards. Pokemon cards are an investment, and you need to think of them like money. I say this because you can you can stand there and say, oh, you know, my kid's six, and in two years, you know, they'll be over it, and they'll, they'll move on to something else, and that's that's probably true in a lot of cases. A lot of kids will move on. But let's just say over that two years that your um, your kid is into Pokemon cards and you just, with birthdays and Christmas and everything else, let's just average it out and let's just say you buy one $6 booster every two weeks. So that's 52 boosters over two years at $6 each. That's $350 you're going to spend on Pokemon cards in two years. Now, if you know what kind of cards you have and you know what they're worth, when your child gets over Pokemon, if they're in good condition and you've looked after them, which we'll talk about that in another video, you can then sell them to collectors and make a lot of money back so that they can feed their new addiction. Um, if they're like me and they don't move on, well then, it's good to know what you've got because the rare cards always get really, really expensive and they're always good to have around. This card here, um, I got when I was 13 years old. I think it was in the third booster pack I ever opened. Um, it's the original Charizard card. Um, I put it in a hard um, case to keep it protected, but this holds a lot of nostalgic value for me because it is pretty cool. So, you know, it's definitely worth knowing what you've got. If I didn't still have this card, it would be very devastating. So, what do you need to know about Pokemon cards? Well, you really need to know how the Pokemon card system works, and what I mean is Every booster pack you buy, whether you buy one of the little um, foil satchels or one of these things, which is just exactly the same, it just has a foil satchel inside here, um, they all um, work the same way. So there's always different cards in a booster pack, you never know what you're going to get, but the mechanics of the booster pack system work the same way. And if you know how the mechanics of the booster pack system works, you can know what cards need to go in a folder or stay at home and be safe and you know what cards they can take to school and play with and trade and, and trash and make really ratty. So basically every single booster pack has 10 cards and an online code card. So this online code card, you can basically go onto the Pokemon website, you can punch this code in, which somebody can take that code if they want, um, and you can basically get yourself an online booster. So with every physical Pokemon product you buy, you get a code card to get a digital version of that product, whether it be a booster or a theme deck or a special box, you'll always get a code card. So you always get something that you can use in the digital realm if you want to play over there, not just in the physical realm. This is really, really good because a lot of schools um, have banned Pokemon cards. So this gives your child the option to play during the week and stuff because basically this is like, um, it's completely safe for kids. There's a very limited chat. There's only specific things you can say like, hi, good game, stuff like that. It doesn't, It the system itself matches you with opponents, so there's no way um, anybody can ever know who your child is because it's just all um, matched and everything's kept anonymous. You play your match and that's it. So it's a really good way for kids to play Pokemon cards as well. All right, so let's get into the 10 cards. So we paid $6 for our booster pack, so where is the $6 worth of value? Well, the first five cards in every single booster uh, a common card. So we just count one, two, three, four, five. Now I don't even need to look at these cards to tell you that they're worth absolutely nothing. These are the cards that definitely take to school and go crazy. You'll know a common card because down the bottom, just in the corner here, there'll be a little um, white circle and that will basically tell you that it's a common card. And when it's a common card, it's worth nothing. I mean, if I tried to turn around and sell these cards on eBay, I could probably list them for maybe five cents and nobody would buy them. Um, I could list hundreds of them together as a bulk lot and maybe sell them for twenty or thirty dollars. Now just as a little side tip for you, if any of you parents are shopping on eBay, if you ever see bulk Pokemon cards, and I mean two or three hundred cards, and it's like, oh, two or three hundred cards from new generations or whatever, be really, really careful. Even if it says includes this card or that card, it may be that they've got two or three hundred common cards and then they've just basically put in two rare cards, 
to make it seem like there's really good cards in there. Um, they're okay to buy if you just want lots of Pokemon cards, but they're really not going to be worth anything. That $30 you spend, you're never ever going to be able to recover that money if you sell those Pokemon cards, unless you can find somebody else who doesn't know what they're buying and buys them from you. So, And I don't like that. I don't like to mislead people. So, um, yeah, definitely school cards. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to then take the back three cards. So the back three cards are always your uncommon cards. They have a little like diamond um, symbol down in the bottom corner here. Now they're slightly rarer than the common cards, but still not worth anything. You may want to keep the trainer cards because some trainer cards can be worth money, but um, once cards aren't um, tournament legal, these the values of these will drop right off and they won't be worth very much at all. So again, these cards here aren't worth a lot of money. If you wanted to make some quick cash and you got some trainer cards and your kid doesn't play Pokemon, they just collect it and they've already got a trainer card, you can do a quick eBay search, which I'll quickly do an eBay search of this one for you right now. So with my quick eBay search of this, um, basically the average going price for this at the moment is $1.99. So, if you know, your, your child already had one of these, or they weren't playing and they don't like to collect trainer cards because they just like to collect the Pokemon, um, right there, you could list that on eBay for two bucks with a dollar fifty to cover postage, and you would literally recover a third of the cost of the booster pack straight away. So, with trainer cards, always check if your child doesn't want them, they could be worth money, you could sell it. Um, some trainer cards will go for up to $10, which means you could actually make more than what you paid for the booster pack just off a trainer card. So there's a third of the value of the booster. So, you know, over here we've got basically seven cards worth absolutely nothing, and this one card is worth a third of the booster pack. So I hope you're sort of seeing that it's not about how many different Pokemons you have, and it's not about... Um, you know, what kind or type it is, it's got to do with the rarity. Um, at the moment, the um, professional, like the Pokemon tournament scene, is actually bigger than ever. It's grown every year since 1999. Um, so cards that can be used to build decks and things like that are always going to be worth money. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but I want to have a quick look at the last two cards in our deck. So these are our last two cards. So this card here... So we've got the first five cards, which are the commons. The next card we get is the reverse holo. So a reverse holo has got a matte picture, and it's shiny around the outside. Now, reverse holos aren't different cards. They're actually the same card, but just an alternate version. And what I mean by that is earlier in our pack, we had a little C-dot, which is a common card, which was worth nothing. And this is the reverse holo C-dot. So it's exactly the same artwork. It's just that this one is shiny. Now, if you get a shiny card, you need to make sure you check what it's worth before you go and say, oh yeah, take that to school. Because even though this is a common, and you can get common reverse holos, uncommon reverse holos, and what we're going to talk about in a minute is rares, and you can also get rare reverse holos. Now, if you get a rare reverse holo, which has basically got a star down the bottom, there's a good chance that that card is worth 5 to $10. Now, a common one like this little C-dot here, again, I'll do a quick search for you and I'll let you know. This is my awesome Pokemon phone case, by the way. So yeah, quick little search of this card, um, and he at the moment is selling for a dollar plus postage. So, doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're paying six dollars for the booster, and you've got two dollars here and one dollar here, those two cards have already made up 50% of the value of what you paid for that booster pack. And again, we've still got these seven cards over here worth absolutely nothing. So there's half of our booster pack cost right there. And I mean, you can add another 50 cents dollar in for the code card, so you can already see that those three cards are making up a big portion of the value of this booster. Um, okay, so the first five cards in our booster packs are commons, not worth anything. The last three are uncommons, and unless there's a trainer card, again, they're probably not worth much. The sixth card in our booster pack is a reverse holo. And again, depending on whether it's a common reverse holo, an uncommon reverse holo, or a rare reverse holo, it can be worth anywhere from a dollar to ten dollars. Now the last card, this is where the value comes in. This can completely, you could make money with this last card. That's the seriousness of what I wanted to get to today is it's not about the quantity, it's all about the rare card. For you as a parent, um, it's all about the rare card. So basically, 
in that um, seventh spot, you're going to get a rare card. Now, you may get a regular rare, which is basically just a matte finish with a star down the bottom. You may get a rare hollow, so that is a shiny pitcher with a black star down the bottom. You may also get a um, ultra rare. This is where you're going to get your mega EXs that your kids are always asking for. It's going to be in that seventh slot of a booster pack. Or you may get an ultra rare, which again is a silver star down the bottom, but it's full art, so the artwork takes up the whole card. Now, to give you an idea, we paid $6 for a booster pack. If we got this card, it's probably worth about a dollar, which means that our booster pack over here, we had three, $3, let's just call it $4. So we got $4 here, we paid $6. That would take us to $5.00. So we haven't done too badly. We've still got these over other cards over here, but they're not really worth anything. So we've nearly made what we paid for that booster pack. We could then sell and nearly get what we made out of it. Now, if we got this card here, the uh, Shiftery, um, he at the moment is, I think, selling for about 3 or $4. So we've got our $4 over here, and now we have $7. So we've actually made a dollar. If we happen to get this card, which it's not out anymore, um, but if you got a card similar to this card, this card currently sells for about $80 to $100. Now, most ultra rares will sell for about $15 to $25. So let's just assume that this is just a 50, let's call it $20 one. Um, so we've got our $4 over here, and now it's $24. So we paid $6 for a booster pack and now we have $24 worth of value. So it's the same as buying four boosters. Um, and if we got this one here, full arts usually go for about $20 to $35. So again, we've got our $4 and let's call it 30. So now we've got $34 worth of value. So what I'm trying to get at here is if you get a silver star down the bottom, which means it's either an ultra rare or an ultra rare full art, I would not be taking it to school. Under no circumstances would I you know, let my child take that to school because that is worth a lot of money and I know 20 or $30 doesn't sound like much, but if you're buying booster packs quite regularly and you end up with four or five of these cards and your kid's walking around with them in their pocket, you're potentially talking about $100, $150 worth of cards just sitting in their pockets. Now, especially if your kid is younger, the older kids aren't stupid. When I was at school 15 years ago, the same thing would happen. The older kids would come up with a pile of rubbish common cards and it would be like that thing they used to do your brothers and sisters. When you, I don't know if you ever, any of you ever had a younger brother or sister, but you'd do that thing where you'd you know, and go and go raid your piggy bank and you'd get you know, 10 five cent pieces and you'd say to your little brother, oh, I'll give you 10 five cent pieces and all you have to do is give me that one two dollar coin. And as a young kid, you're like, oh my gosh, I get 10 things and I only have to give one thing, sweet, because they don't understand the value yet. So I know it might suck to say to you, you know, your child, you can't take that to school because they're not going to understand, but that's the thing that's going to happen is some older kid is going to come up with a pile of cards and they might say, I oh, will give you 15 cards for that, you know, one card. Those 15 cards aren't even worth a dollar and you've just traded a card worth $80. So, you know, it's more for your benefit and your, your child's benefit because as they get a little bit older and they start to understand it, if they've accidentally traded all their rare cards away, they're just going to have a pile of Pokemon cards worth nothing, which is just going to be very disappointing. Um, so, yeah, that's just to recap for you, just so you're you know, really, really clear. I know I'm harping on, but um, I just see it so many times. I mean, I even had a kid that come in and, and traded this away and he was just so upset when he found out what it was worth. Um, but anything with a diamond or a circle down the bottom, safe. Anything with a star down the bottom, not safe. If it is a regular rare or a um, rare hollow, you could always check it first and it might only be worth a dollar or two, so if you're happy for them to take that to school, um, then that's fine. Um, you probably, like, especially with the rare hollows, you probably won't get too many kids trying to trade them because they're hard to spot in amongst everything else. You might have some trouble with the, you know, rare hollows, but I would definitely, if you want my advice, leave these at home. They are the bulk of your value. So again, when I said at the start of the video, you know, when your child grows out of Pokemon, 
or they become like an adult collector like me. These are the kind of cards that are worth the big dollars. These are the kind of cards you want to have around. Um, even if they're missing a few of these cards, they're pretty easy to find to build your setup. But um, yeah, if your kid gets older and says, oh, I'm not into Pokemon anymore, if you've got, say, you've bought 20 or 30 booster packs over the course of a year, which is not a lot, um, and you get maybe five of these cards, you know, you could turn around and sell them for $150 and they could buy themselves whatever they're into at the moment. So they're definitely worth keeping and definitely worth looking after. Anyway, if you have any questions about Pokemon cards, just pop them in the comment section below. I'll be doing my best to answer them. I'll be making a couple more videos on how to build a deck, um, how to protect your cards, stuff like that. So watch out for them and um, I'll see you later, guys.